In this video, I'll show you how to generate graphs with the OS Watcher Black Box Analyzer. The first thing we'll want to do is run the analyzer, and we'll run it on a particular archive. And in this case, it's got to be the fully qualified path name. So we have an archive here in this subdirectory underneath archive. We'll run the analyzer and we're presented with this uh, menu interface and um, there's several options for producing graphs you, we can fire up the uh, graphs and display them on the screen here with these options one two three four and five or we can actually generate uh, GIF files with options six seven and eight so we can either display or have it written to a file um, the other thing we can do is we can specify a different location by default, these graphs are going to go in the GIF uh, subdirectory where OS Watcher Black Box is installed. But if we wanted to specify an alternate location, we could with this option. So I'll show you how to generate some graphs here. You can see we're generating the CPU graphs by selecting option number one. Okay. And um, there's several uh, different options. We can um, display process queues. We can uh, display CP utilization. And there's some uh, other uh, metrics available like context switches. Um, if it's available through VMstat, uh, I, I try to capture that information and graph it. So um, same thing with memory and disk. We can see we can generate the memory graphs here with option number four. Option number five it lets us to lets us display uh, disk, and what it does here is uh, you may have hundreds of devices on your on your uh, system. It will list them all, but it orders them uh, with respect to which devices have the highest service time. So it lets you focus on those devices that are the most important, and those devices that uh, aren't important. Uh, really, there's probably no reason to graph those. So we can we can ask to graph a specific one so we'll graph uh, SDA and we can see for this particular device we get percent busy we can get the service time writes per second and reads per second okay now to get rid of these graphs once they're on the screen, the only way to do that is with option number R. So option number R will remove the graphs that have already been displayed to the screen. Okay. So this is how we display graphs if we want to fire them up on the screen. If we want to generate GIF files, then we have option six, seven, and eight. So option six will generate these graphs and create GIF files and put them in the GIF subdirectory here by default and we can see we hit this option and this is what it's doing we can see them writing to the GIF subdirectory okay same thing is true for 7 and 8 option 8 uh, again if you have hundreds of uh, devices option 8 is going to generate all the all the disk uh, GIFs not just for a specific device if you want to graph only one device then um, do option number five but if you want to get all of them do option number eight okay so by default they're going to the GIF subdirectory but we can change that with option L we can specify a different location and we give it a fully qualified path okay so now if we generate graphs and I'll do the memory graphs this time they should go to the temp subdirectory okay and we can see here that they in fact are being written to that subdirectory so that's what option L is the only other thing I want to show you is that you can display um, specific times on the graph if you have a graph and let me f let's look at one here well these aren't that interesting let's get something else here uh, Okay. 
look at these context switches per second graph. Um, what we have in the archive is about 18 hours worth of data and your archive can be rather large. Maybe your archive is 24 or 48 hours. So what you'll have on these graphs is the, the entire archive graphed in this, in this space. So it can get rather busy, especially if you had a performance problem, say at 9.20 uh, in the morning, right? You really want to focus on just this 9 to 10 o'clock uh, period. So we can do that by uh, changing the time scale here. And I'll show you how to do that. To specify a different time scale. It's option number T. So we enter in a start time. In this case, we'll say June 13 at 9 o'clock at night, 2100. That's our start time. Stop time, June 13, 2200. So from 9 to 10 o'clock. And now we'll do the same graph again. Uh, option number three. Let me remove them first. So now we can see this time scale uh, expanded now. So now we can get uh, very fine granularity. So if you had a performance problem, say around 920, uh, we can see what's happening uh, with a lot more granularity. So that's it. Um, that's how you produce graphs.